Hey there, everyone. I'm Joshua Short. Lauren has a night off. We hope you're safe and we're coming on the air at six one year after one of the darkest days in Michiana's history. It was on this day last year when four people lost their lives in an accident just north of Napanee. Their names Edith Schmucker, Emma Thompson, Zach Potts and Indiana Second District Congresswoman Jackie Walorski. Mark Peterson helped lead our coverage on that tragic day and has covered Jackie for years now. He joins us live with new reaction. Hey, Mark. It was noted at the funeral. Jackie Walorski was gone in the blink of an eye in a fraction of a second. Only now have we had the benefit of 365 days to catch our collective breath. For many, it's not hard to remember how things played out August 3rd, 2022. It's impossible to forget. So I was at the tire shop. My truck's on the lift. There's no wheels on my truck. There's no tires on the wheels. Um, I'm stuck there for two hours. I'm getting phone calls and messages that they can't get a hold of Jackie or Zach or Emma. And I'm texting, I'm calling. Uh, I'm met at the door with the sheriff's deputy. And he meets me and he says, Dean, we, uh, we have to go in and sit down. Uh, when the deputy shows up at your house and says we have to sit down and doesn't say we have to get to the hospital, um, you've got a pretty good idea what happened. It was just such a, a shaking moment for all of us, a moment that just rocked me to the core, rocked our district to the core, uh, and we'll never forget the, the terror of, of finding out that you lost a, a dear friend uh, to a tragic car accident. At the time, Rudy Yakum was at a corporate retreat in northern Michigan giving a presentation. Had my iPad open for notes as I was in the middle of my presentation and received a text message on the screen that said, hey, just a few minutes ago, uh, our congresswoman was killed tragically in a car accident. Transparently, I walked out of that, uh, walked out of the presentation right in the middle of it and just, just walked out and just started crying. That day, Jackie Walorski was doing what Jackie Walorski always did, mixing it up with constituents. She was returning from a ribbon cutting event in Claypool when the crash took place with her career at an apparent crossroads. Jackie had two speeds, fast and faster. Uh, in all the conversations that we had uh, over the years, uh, she and I have never talked about on either side of the equation slowing down. It's always about looking forward, uh, figuring out how we can better serve uh, the people uh, of the district. Well, actually, um, yeah, she was planning on this being her last, her last term. She had such terrible back pain, joint pain, arthritis. The world didn't know it, but oh, it was, uh, it was terrible pain uh, and she had a super high pain tolerance but she was always a fighter for the underdog and she wasn't going to let pain stop her. Swihart said what his wife wanted to do next was to be a national spokesperson for an organization fighting to end child hunger. In addition to dealing with his wife's passing, Swihart also had to decide who he wanted to see her congressional torch pass to, which candidate to endorse. No fewer than seven times, he says, he was encouraged to run for the seat himself. I'm a school teacher. I'm a music teacher. I just retired. But um, if I would have lost my life, School City of Mishawaka would not have knocked on the door and said, oh, Jackie, would you come over and teach Dean's music classes? Just because you're married to somebody doesn't mean that they need to take the job. But also, I've been out there in D.C. I've, I've seen the job she did. I've seen the pressures that were put on her. That place is a cesspool. When they call it a swamp, it's a swamp. Swihart has revived a ministry, Impact International, he and his wife created more than two decades ago. And he is sifting through and passing on some of the many mementos his wife left behind. Because I, I don't know what to do with all the things that she's been given over the years. Um, but I do know people will appreciate them when I get the right things to the right people. In this case, Swihart gave this reporter awards Walorski received from the Indiana Broadcasters Association for honoring the First Amendment. As for the anniversary, Swihart will have dinner with family. As for the congressman... On August 3rd, uh, uh, we'll be planning personally to make a stop and a visit at, at Jackie's graveside, uh, say a little prayer and have a little time of reflection there as well. Be reaching out to her family uh, on uh, on that day and uh, making sure that uh, they know that they still have my my love, support, and and prayers. And Jackie's legacy lives on. In the past year, plans announced to add Walorski's name to the VA, the Veterans Administration Clinic in Mishawaka, and to an Elkhart County Road uh, out by the Amazon facility.
Wow, great reporting. Mark Peterson leading us off tonight. We appreciate your reporting. And obviously, we are not alone in that regard. Mark, thank you. We want to take another moment here to remember the other three people killed in that crash. You see their faces here. Edith Schmucker is where we start. She was in the other car. She was a loving mother and worked at Miller's Mary Manor in Wakarusa. In the car with Jackie were Zach Potts and Emma Thompson. Zach was just 27 and a rising star serving as chair of the St. Joe County Republican Party. You see him there. Emma was Jackie's communications director. She's remembered as a loving friend, daughter, and woman of faith. Our thoughts are with their families, too, on this very difficult anniversary.